With step loading, what we would say is don't take massive jumps. As you can see here, the jumps between set one and set two are just two kilos. Then again, two kilos, two kilos, two kilos. So it's very, very important when you do step loading, you step with the same increment, okay? So, you know, you don't want to do a two kilo jump and then a five kilo jump and then a one kilo jump and then a 10 kilo jump. That's not what we want to do. We want to make sure we're very consistent with the way that we step up in regards to the sets. This is because it's going to give the nervous system a chance to really potentiate, which basically means excite the nervous system. We know the CNS is going to control how your body you know, can fire and, and, and recruit those muscle fibers. So doing it in a consistent pattern is going to give your body the best opportunity and best chance to be able to exert the most force in the last set. Okay, if you go too heavy, it's not gonna, gonna work too well. You're also gonna risk injury and technique isn't gonna be quite as good. So step load like this. So let's imagine you're doing your step loading. You've done 100 for five, 102 for five, 104 for five, and then you try 106, but guess what? Yeah, you can't manage five reps. You only do three, okay? Well, because you only managed three reps and the rep scheme was five sets of five, you would not jump up here. What you would do, is you'd, you'd maintain the same weight and you try and do three, four, or five again. So you only increase the weight with step loading when you've actually hit the highest rep number, all right? And you feel that it is a little bit more in the tank. So that's what you would do there. In terms of following up the following week now, because you missed repetitions on, the set, on set four and set five, what you wanna do is repeat this whole workout again, start on exactly the same weight. We don't wanna follow progressive overload on set one because we know Come set four, we're gonna run into a little bit of a roadblock. You'd wanna make sure you carry on using the same weights until you can do five sets of five. When you do manage to do five sets of five, what would happen is what you did for set two would become set one the following week. So you walk in the gym, you know you can do five sets of five, you did it the week before, you're gonna do 102, 104, 106, 108, and hopefully 110, but you're only gonna make those jumps up in, in load if you do manage to do the five reps and you feel that you can um, you know, get, the, get a slightly higher weight for the next set. In terms of loading, like I said, we've got the small jumps, but one thing um, you need to realize as well is ideally for strength adaptations, you want the difference in load between set one and the final set to be 10%, okay? 8% is optimal. We do say eight to 12 is, is cool and 10 being in the middle of that. So if you're a little bit out at 12%, that's fine. If you're at 8%, even better. But obviously the stronger you are, the easier it is to keep the sets tighter. If you're a little bit weaker and you can't you know, exert as much force on the bar, you've got less room to, to play with. So try and get all your sets within 10% of each other if we can, if the goal is strength. So this is primarily talking, at you, talking about your big compound movements, your squats, your deadlifts, uh, your incline press, your bench press, your dips exercises like that. We're primarily talking about the A series with these exercises. So yeah, try and keep all your sets tight within 10% when we do step loading. So that's how we do step loading. Any questions on this? Just feel free to reach out to your coach and we can obviously go through it with you.